for this video, you find me with the 2022 Volkswagen Jetta GLI in Autobahn trim. This one is finished in a new shade of red for 2022 called King's Red Metallic. And it also has the black package, which gets you the black alloy wheels and the black lip spoiler. This GLI is powered by a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine, cranking out 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. And this Jetta GLI is connected to a seven-speed DSG or dual clutch transmission. But you can also spec it out in the six-speed manual transmission. What's going on everyone? My name is Hanson. Thanks for joining me. And for this video, I want to walk you through this 2022 Volkswagen Jetta GLI and give you my likes and dislikes on it. Now for 2022, this GLI is the spicy version of the dull and plain Volkswagen Jetta. And it's also more expensive. The cheapest Jetta you can buy starts at over $20,000, whereas this GLI starts at almost $31,000. Now for the 2022 model year, there's a very mild facelift for both the Jetta and the GLI. And there's also new trim configurations for both. For the GLI, Volkswagen has streamlined it and made it very easy to choose because this is the only option. This trim is called Autobahn and this car with the seven speed DSG and the black package comes in at almost $34,000 after destination. And all things considered, given the times that we're living in now, at that sticker, the Volkswagen GLI is actually reasonably priced because it's a fun to drive sports sedan, has lots of up-to-date features, and it has some extra racy bits that make the GLI look like it can blend in at Waterfest and also at the office parking lot without looking ridiculous. And I wanna start this review on the inside first because there's a lot of features in here that I really like. Starting off with the fully digital instrument cluster. This is a 10.25 inch display that looks really sharp. I'm a big fan of these displays because it's just one more way you can personalize your car. You can change the look of the gauges, display lots of helpful information, and it's just a great way of making your car look more luxurious. Next, I like this infotainment screen, mostly because it has wireless app connect, which means that you can use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wirelessly. No more having to pull out your phone when you get in and plugging it in. If you're not using the smartphone integration stuff, performance of their native infotainment system is also pretty good. There's some gimmicky things about it, like the proximity sensor, which can sense your hand as you get close to it, and also the optional gesture controls, which would be infuriating if you had to rely on it. Overall, not a bad screen, and I love how the screen complements the look of the instrument cluster. The two screen design is very classy. And also kudos to Volkswagen for keeping the volume and tuning dials on the infotainment screen because dials and buttons are very good things. I need that tactile feedback. Unfortunately, they went full haptic feedback on us on the steering wheel controls. I do not like these touch sensitive buttons. I'm sure these button panels are cheaper to manufacture because there's fewer moving parts. But since you're pushing on a panel, the pressing effort feels higher than your typical steering wheel button. The single button design also feels cheap and there's actually some unpleasant noises when you're pressing on it. I also don't like how the volume and track control buttons behave differently than the rest of the panel because these can also act as a slider. So you can unintentionally change things if you happen to graze on the surface. As for the rest of the steering wheel, this is one of the places where Volkswagen has made a slight change. This is the new steering wheel design and the GLI trim has the red highlight to remind you that this is the fast version. There's also slight changes in the design of the shift knob for both the DSG and the manual transmission. But aside from those visual updates, the interior is largely the same. And the seats on the GLI feel pretty good. They're both heated and ventilated. And the GLI only comes with the leather seats with nice contrast stitching. And there's also a red leather underlay on these seats, so it adds some extra depth to them, which looks pretty nice. Moving to the back, the rear seats of the GLI are nice as well, and there's decent leg room for your passengers. Unfortunately, no center vents here or USB connections. And finally, there's a 10 color ambient lighting scheme, and you can customize it so it changes according to your different driving modes. Obviously, this doesn't add any horsepower, 
but it does elevate the commuting experience and it's one easy way to make the car feel more luxurious and very cool looking at night. Now, let's move on to the exterior where Volkswagen has also made some changes for the 2022 model year. But before we do that, if you're liking this video so far, make sure you hit that like button because that's going to keep me sitting in the passenger seat and walking you through some of the other cars that you can buy today. With that being said, the Jetta GLI, this one got a mild facelift. The front bumper has been revised. The GLI has the usual red line across the grille, but this time it has additional chrome lining around it. Not a big fan of that. The one big addition to the front here are these inlets that look like they can cool the brakes. And I can assure you that while they look cool, they don't actually cool anything as they're purely cosmetic. The shade of the red on this thing also doesn't match the King's Red metallic paint on the rest of the car. As for the side of the GLI, it's pretty much unchanged. It still has the special red calipers and the side skirts. And this tester comes with the only available package that you can equip which is called the black package, and it adds these black 18 inch wheels. Now moving to the back, the rear end has received a very nice restyled rear bumper. This new one has a honeycomb style diffuser and the dual exhaust tips have gotten bigger. And perhaps the bigger exhaust tips are there to show you how loud it can get in here because if you want it, you can make it sound like you have a mild aftermarket exhaust equipped in here. There's different driving modes in this GLI, and if you put yourself into sport mode or set the exhaust note to sport, there will be more engine and exhaust noise piped in here through the speakers. It sounds aggressive and loud. It sounds like they blended a diesel engine with a Subaru with unequal life headers and a turbo four cylinder engine and mashed it all into one engine sound. It sounds kind of crazy and yet yeah, can be uncomfortable at times. While we're on the topic of exhaust notes, let's drive under different modes to hear what the exhaust sounds like. So currently I'm in sport mode. I'm going to switch to normal. Sounds fairly quiet. The engine doesn't sound too boisterous. The exhaust is manageable. But then you go into sport mode and every time you rev, just hear this rumble and it's all electronic of course most cars do this nowadays and the exhaust of this thing isn't really loud when you're standing outside but it can get really loud in here especially when you're driving aggressively that sound pretty serious it's got a bark but that exhaust sound is more of a superficial thing about sport mode because there's a lot that you can tweak in the GLI to suit your driving style. You can change aspects of the steering, the engine, the exhaust like I just mentioned, and the GLI also comes with DCC adaptive damping system so you can stiffen the suspension for a slightly more responsive ride. It's a very slight change in damping. It's not as aggressive as something like the Hyundai Veloster N where you can go from normal all the way to super stiff where your spine will turn into dust. And one bonus for car enthusiasts that like to track and autocross their cars, this GLI comes with a front limited slip differential that's electronically controlled. Additionally, when compared to the normal Jetta, this GLI has the more complex but more traditional multi-link rear suspension, which will give you better road feel. So how does all of that translate to the driving experience? This is a fun to drive sports sedan, and it's as fun as driving the hatchback version, the Volkswagen GTI. The turbo engine is peppy and torquey, and the dual clutch transmission responds very quickly, and is very easy to control with these paddle shifters. It's got the proper bones to tackle back roads like the one I've been driving on, and it's tunable enough on the fly to give me comfortable and quiet everyday daily driving comfort. Speaking of daily driving stuff, this also comes with plenty of nice standard safety features like blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and also some semi-automated driving assistance features like lane keeping system and also adaptive cruise control. Overall, pretty nice solid set of features, and for $34,000, you do have a lot of options out there. But this Jetta GLI, it's a really nice blend of sports sedan, daily driver, and also, if you look hard enough, maybe some sort of a luxury car. 
Well, there you have it. That's my review of the 2022 Volkswagen Jetta GLI. I want to thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. And if you've learned something, hit that like button and hit that subscribe and that notification bell so that you could be notified anytime we make a new video. I'll wrap it up right there. My name is Hanson. This has been the GLI and I'll see you next time.